service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Full AccuWeather forecast right across the top of this and all CNC local news pages. Once again, keep an eye on that forecast. Low temperatures and slippery road conditions led to nearly three dozen traffic accidents Thursday morning, including several vehicle rollovers. Lake effect snow fell overnight and continued in most of the lakefront towns through rush hour. Here in Greece, we measured an inch of new snow between 7.30 and 8.30. Police in Webster say road conditions probably caused a Webster school bus to slide off the road on its way to Schlegel Elementary School Wednesday. One wheel went into a ditch on the Monroe-Wayne County Line Road. The bus was stranded. There were about two dozen children on board. Nobody hurt. A Spencerport man was hurt, though. He suffered a serious head injury in a snowmobile accident. Orleans County deputies say 35-year-old John Batista was riding a trail north of 18 in Kendall on Wednesday when he slid into a ditch and was thrown. He went headfirst into another snowmobile and he's hospitalized in guarded condition. With lake effect snow, like real estate, it's all location, location, location. Areas along the Lake Ontario shoreline will continue to get snow dictated as the wind blows while this weather pattern holds. Thursday morning, the snow band stretched all the way down to the thruway, but usually it ends about 490. 24-hour snow totals from National Weather Service spotters show 11 inches at Hamlin Beach, 8 at Hilton, 7 at Parma Center, further to the south in Brockport, 1.4 inches. Skipping to the east side, spotters in Wayne County reported a foot of snow on the ground in Sodus. A year after filing for bankruptcy, Eastman Kodak Company is moving step by step to get itself out. The latest word is U.S. Bankruptcy Court approval of an $844 million financing package that Kodak will use to complete its restructuring. The deal includes both new loans and refinancing of existing Kodak debt from a group of the company's leading creditors who see it as the best way of getting their money back. Judge Alan Groper approved the plan following a hearing in New York City. Kodak can convert up to $644 million into exit funding to end its bankruptcy proceedings, provided it meets certain conditions. One is the sale of its digital imaging patents, currently underway, scheduled to be finalized next month. Others include filing a reorganization plan by September 30th, getting out from under the company's pension obligations to workers in the United Kingdom, and selling off those various imaging businesses. Kodak attorney Andrew Diedrich said the company is well on its way to completing the reorganization. Kodak issued a statement in which CEO Antonio Perez says this demonstrates the tangible and meaningful progress Kodak is making as it moves through the final phase of its restructuring. It was supposed to be the evening the Arundacoit Town Board finally sealed a tax deal with developers Mike and Wendy Nolan, jump-starting the stalled I-Square project. Instead, the town board first went into executive session, then tabled the resolution before voting. This is the second time the town has failed to grant a property tax abatement for I-Square. The Nolans say they can't carry out their plans for a multi-use renovation of the Cooper and Titus area without it. The town stalled on a 25-year agreement in September, but finally worked out a compromise to reevaluate the deal after 15 and then 20 years. A special meeting was called for Wednesday afternoon to vote on it. Then a last-minute dispute threw I-Square off the tracks again. The town attorney said he still needed details from the Nolans about the construction schedule and what consequences the couple would face if they can't be met. David Nolan said he had already provided that information to the town. The town said he hadn't, and that's where things ended. Afterwards, Arundaquoit Supervisor Mary Joyce DeRizio said she hopes further talks will work things out. But a frustrated Nolan told reporters he's not interested anymore. Nolan said after a year and a half of trying to revitalize the old commercial heart of the town, he has had it. He said something will go forward on the Cooper Road Titus Avenue corner, but it will be in a different form. No agreement found either on Wednesday evening's annual meeting of the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. It did not heal any divide that's broken out between supporters of the dismissed music director, Aril Remerite, and orchestra leadership that fired him. The meeting proceeded after a state Supreme Court judge, Kenneth Fisher, denied a request to issue a restraining order at a hearing held earlier in the day. Attorney Eileen Buchholz sought to delay the meeting on behalf of herself and other write-in candidates for the RPO Board of Directors. They want to replace the current board with a pro-Remerite slate. 
The RPO declined to let the insurgent candidates be introduced. Their names were submitted after nominations closed per the orchestra's bylaws. Another hearing on that suit will be held February 4th. The RPO went on to elect eight members to its board, all of them backed by the existing board members. Some RPO orchestra supporters announced they could no longer donate or subscribe at the meeting. Some said they would turn in their tickets for this week's concerts. Musicians were also divided. Musicians Committee co-chair Craig Sutherland said most musicians agree with the board and are frustrated at not being heard. But cellist Ingrid Bach wrote in a letter to City Newspaper that a large group of musicians who believe the board is wrong are not speaking publicly. She wrote, this large group of musicians has been silenced by fear. RPO board chair Elizabeth Rice said conductor Remerite cleared out his office before his firing was announced. She says other people are pushing on his behalf, but Remerite himself has not sought to come back or to conduct the rest of the current season. The grease man who crashed his car Tuesday while fleeing from police is now charged with criminal possession of stolen property, reckless endangerment, criminal mischief, reckless driving, and aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. 50-year-old Perry Runyon was arraigned at Strong Memorial Hospital where he put himself after crashing on Tuesday. Greece police say they want to investigate a report of a stolen car at an apartment development on Kingsbury Drive. When they tried to question Runyon, he took off in his car. Although police say they weren't pursuing, Runyon ran a stop sign and then he got rammed by a flatbed truck. The truck went off the road and hit a house on Prince Lane. Runyon ended up in Strong Memorial Hospital, which is where he was arraigned. He faces a court appearance Friday. To the left of the player window, links to these and other stories at the bottom of the page. Links you can use to post news and information directly to us. Next news is as it happens. Updates are when necessary. And by what you submit, you can help us be the judge of that. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.